we get our second we get our second um 22 minute episode in this series and we finally get to see marcy and what she's been up to and yeah i can definitely yeah and she's <laughs> like i said before with the fort in the road episode when it came to people saying this was kind of like legend of zelda yeah, the Marcy's pretty much is freaking, oh man, she just screams it. I mean, especially with Breath of the Wild, my goodness. And, yeah, this is going to be interesting. Okay, so, this is Amphibia, this is episode 26, Marcy at the Gates. Oh boy. So, I'll admit, this is an interesting episode, because... On one hand, like, there is a moment in this episode where I'm like, I feel like we, I feel like we should wrap up here, but then it goes a couple extra steps, in my opinion, and from, and I mean, the way they wrap up this episode, it does kind of feel like, I don't know, it's weird, it's weird. So, okay, so let's, let's dive into this. So, obviously, Marcy at the Gates... The family, after two, after a long journey, has finally arrived at Newtopia. It's funny how we went from the Wax Museum episode to this. It's a little bit interesting, but I mean, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. I mean, what better way to head into a big episode than to give a nod to your predecessor and sorts? So, yeah, the family arrives at Newtopia, but they are not. And oh wait, yeah, and and. Before they arrive at Newtopia, however, Anne is a little bit down that despite the fact that they've gone on this journey, they haven't found Sasha or Marcy. And so we get to, we get this, we get, we finally get some character from Marcy um, before we even see her in this. So we get, so from what Anne, she, what we see and what Anne tells the family, Marcy is, she's a, she's a gamer, but she's super smart. But she also can get easily distracted and clumsy. A little too distracted and clumsy, actually. Like she's always, like she's always walking around in like her no, her head, her literal. She's literally her head, literal nose in a book, and she like and always has to call out something like lock her door, and so she would duck or like so or like or like bottle or like bottle and like. So, or even like there's one where Marcy's on like sitting in the middle of a gym playing on her or her her Nintendo Switch parody and Anne has to come in and like save her from getting hit in the head with the volleyball. Yeah, those 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 hurt. <laughs> um I'll even admit it's um okay, well so yeah, um I'll admit the way the way she kind of, like, the way she acts, too, I know a lot of people, like, refer, like, when it comes to Amphibia, they like to compare Anne with Luce, and, I mean, for the Owl House, and comparing Amphibia to Owl House, a lot of people compare Anne with Luce. It makes sense, they're the main characters in each show, but I feel like Luce has more similarities to Marcy than Anne. I mean, because... One is, Marcy is very hyper when it comes to, like, her, her the way she talks. It really remind. I just, I really just want to, I'm really fascinated now to have a crossover. I mean, I keep saying that. Like, if they do do a crossover with Amphibia and Owl House, I can totally see Anne and Luce, I mean, Anne and Luce, Marcy and Luce just sitting down and talking for, like, hours. That's all, that's how I see this, because Marcy, like, Luce... Is really into fantasy and stuff she is and she can get a little distracted and somewhat oblivious to things i mean for marcy's it's literally oblivious to everything whereas loose it's oblivious to some uh relationships <laughs> so um yeah but after we get that um brief uh, a brief summary of Marcy, the family arrives at Utopia. Very, very interesting, very interesting design because usually when you think of a of a kingdom or at least a metropolis, as they call it, this 
it's like it's surrounded by wall it's like surrounded by walls you got like a big bridge or at least the big path to a gate no this one actually is in the shores it's like weird because you have this big big metropolis like p place with like a giant main castle there are walls but it's on the sh but it's literally within the it's literally within the in the waters like shallow it's that's weird like the family has to literally walk through the shallow waters just to get to the main gate and a part of me wonders why that is i mean could it be that the tides recede and maybe there shows something underneath but there is something underneath in this case and that's um the reason why the gates are locked because yeah the family arrives at the gates and they request to get in but then the guard the gatekeeper is like sorry we're closed why well we can't because the barbarians are here yeah that's probably the weirdest name i've ever seen for this because they say barbarians you automatically think oh so like some rogue toads or maybe frogs or something no they're giant ants no joke giant ants um <laughs> and and yeah they attack and so they basically have a nest underneath newtopia and so that's why the city is on lockdown and <laughs> yes the city's on lockdown how's that for how's that for a statement in 2021 so the family has to well actually the, yeah so the family gets attacked by one of these giant ants and in the madness um marcy comes in and saves them and yeah, she, she, oh my god, wow, she looks like, she looks freaking badass, like, she has a cross, she has a cross, she has a crossbow on her wrist, and she has, like, she's got this hood, she's just, she's literally decked out in this cool survivor outfit that really reminds me of, of Breath of the Wild, especially with the hood, because that was my, that was, that was the cool, that was what I always wore when I was playing, I always had the hood, I, I felt like it just looked cool, <laughs> And Luce, I mean, Luce, Anne and Marcy, <laughs> I'm getting confused with all the characters now. Anne and Marcy, obviously, they've seen each other, they're freaking out. Okay, sorry. They're, they're seeing each other, they're freaking out, and then Marcy sees um, Hop Hop Polly and Sprig, and she's like, oh wow, you actually, and... <laughs> And it's and this is the part where she kind of gets like shows just how smart she is because she examines them and is auto and automatically knows like facts about each of them like how Hop Hop is like just by observing Hop, literally just doing the diameter and circumference of Hop Pop's head she can figure out that he's from Wartwood and that he you know and that stuff he's like wow you can all you can figure that out just by observing my head <laughs> and. This is also a fun little tidbit is she examines Polly and predicts that her feet will be coming in within the next two months. Season three, or at least by the end of this season, I want to see that. <laughs> and Spring, on the other hand, is understandably untrustworthy of Marcy because, you know, we saw what happened with Sasha, but Sprig being Sprig, he's very, very, very securative of this. He's just like, like marcy asks if like he's poisonous and he's like i might be but actually honestly i don't know <laughs> like that was funny so marcy and marcy and uh and or marcy shows that she's been busy like obviously at the start she's been busy and it turns out that she, when she was teleported to amphibia she landed smack dab in newtopia and i kind of question that because like so when you look at the map when you look at the map which pretty much which is the intro like when they pan out the giant lily pad so you have Anne that landed in wartwood which from what i'm which looks like in the south southwest or at least yeah the southwest part of the island of amphibia sasha had to sasha landed somewhere in that area so unless they have so like my theory on this is Let's see. All right, yeah. Sorry. Hang on. So, one thing. So, if if we really are doing this, okay. I'm I'm really. Okay. 
or this looks something more like Pac-Man now. Um, so let's see, Newtopia. I'm gonna put new. I'm gonna put an N for Newtopia, a W for Wartwood, and I'm just gonna put. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put a T for Toad Tower because, if I'm correct, the mountain area is like this, and it surrounds. Newtopia because when they went when they had to go to Newtopia it wasn't just like exit the valley and then Newtopia was like right there they had to go around this mountain ridge so if I had to take a guess so I'm going to show you guys this because I wonder if this comes into play probably doesn't but I want to do this so all right so let's see so when we look at when we look at where Anne is Wartwood W Sasha had to be around Toad Tower, which I'm pretty sure was around here, so T. And then, now we have Marcy who landed smack dab in Wartwood. So notice how it's kind of like, it, it is kind of like a line. I'm really curious about this, because... Within, because, so... I don't know, it's, it's weird, it's weird, because... I just find it really curious how Marcy, Sasha, and Anne all spawned within three different areas of, of Amphibia, yet they weren't, they didn't seem that random. Like, when you look at the map, like, when you look at the poorly drawn lily pad that I have, it doesn't seem that random. So I'm wondering if that had something to do with the Calamity box, like, maybe... It's leading somewhere, or maybe they were there. They were put there for certain reasons. I'm trying to. I'm really trying to overthink this. I mean, that's kind of how this show works, though. Like you, you're questioning things, and I'm questioning when this freak, when the freaking calamity box will be brought back into play, because you know we know where that is. Oh boy. <laughs> so yeah. So all this is going on, but. In, Obviously, Anne, Hop, Pop, and Polly, and Spray want to get into Utopia, and Marcy explains that the only way that Utopia is going to open back up the gates is if they get rid of the ants, and that's why she was. And so she was put on the on a quest to get rid of them, and so she her plan is to scare them off, like basically force them out of the area. Which, which is one is clever too. From what I've seen of Marcy so far, it is a good. It does it does show some good character in her. I mean, it, because if it was if it was Sasha, it was she probably just been like, kill him, kill him all. <laughs> but Marcy is like, no, we're just gonna scare him off. We're gonna force him out. We're gonna do it like this. And so she has her stink shrooms, and yes, stink shrooms. And so the plan is they're gonna go into the queen. They go into the ant hill go underground and find the queen and use the stink streams to scare her off because since she's the queen all the other it's will follow makes it pretty easy for them however Anne isn't 100 percent worth trusting of marcy because even though marcy has spent over three months now by herself technically in this world and has become a survivor she still is very clumsy and easily distracted because like what like i think like three times in three times three times in this episode her cave catches on fire two of them two of them were like what how <laughs> like one of them i thought made sense because they were in a room with torches behind her so i was like oh her cave kind of caught on the torch but the other two times it was like spontaneous combustion <laughs> like the freaking bell for my car leaked who anyone remember that remember when spencer was there with the bell and he would ring it or no no not even no not yeah yeah he rung it and it spontaneously combusted and well okay it was more than just a bell like anything spencer touched seemingly caught on fire like it was weird but it was funny so marcy it's that with her cape yeah it's weird so Marcy pretty much gives them the plan, so Anne, uh, Anne believes that they, so Anne goes along with it, but she wants Marcy to be safe, and they go, but then Sprig kind of tells Hop Pop and Polly, maybe they shouldn't trust her, because obviously what happened with Sasha, and yeah, they, again, it's understandable as to why Sprig doesn't want to trust her, but, again, really, 
see. It's like, come on. <laughs> so, yeah, but they go into the hole, and Marcy, yeah, she, I'm, I was a little bit questioning, I was questioning why Marcy, or how Marcy has survived this long, because she, she won, she trips and falls into the hole, and she nearly gets crushed by a rock. She, yeah, she, it's weird, it's really weird, like, how she nearly gets hurt, but she, because Anne was there, she kind of was able to do it. I don't know, it was, it was really, really, really weird. But, um, yeah, and they, but eventually, after a lot of, the little bit of chaos, like, um, the, the ants attack, and they nearly take Sprig, but they are, but Sprig is able to get out. They go in, there's a moment where, like, well, I mean, one thing I do like about Marcy is she's very resourceful, like, she uses the various things that are within the cave to create these potions to cause distractions or like block off paths or even create paths i really like that i really it, i mean again it shows the creative and intelligent side of mars because as and acknowledge she is the brains of the technically technical brains of the three so they were able to they go and eventually run into the queen but Anne isn't exactly Again, she doesn't want to lose Marcy. And I'm if I'm correct, this episode came out the same week as Enchanting Grand Fright, or at least the week at least around that time, because the way these two talk to each other, I'm like, are you sure you guys are more than just friends? This is that's just me. I'm pretty I'm I mean I can definitely could see I mean I can definitely see Anne getting caught up in the moment being like, I've lost you know, like Sasha. You know, like I lost. I've. I or I haven't seen you in. I haven't seen you in months. I just got you back. I'm not gonna lose you. Like when she because like for Sasha, she got Sasha back and then immediately lost her because of what she what the two eventually would go become. So obviously Anne doesn't want that to happen to Marcy, but Marcy tells Anne that she needs to trust her because she. Is it, because again, it's been three months. She's been here for over three months. She has done a lot of things to survive. So she know. So she's like, and you just gotta trust me. Trust me, so I can go into this and Queen Ant's mouth to save Sprig because the Queen Ant ate Sprig. <laughs> but um, yeah. So and so Marcy goes in the Sprig. It goes into the Queen Ant's mouth, gets Sprig out, and is able to save her in this pretty epic way. And, oh no, did her eyes glow? Did her eyes glow? I don't know, it looked so epic, I, maybe, maybe I missed, maybe I, maybe, maybe I missed it. Or maybe there was, I don't know, it was like, I mean, based off of the three crystals on the box, and then Anne's eyes glow, glowed blue, and Sasha has a red sword, I'm gonna guess that Marcy's eyes glow green, like maybe they did in this episode, and I completely forgot, completely forgot because I was so caught up in everything else, like I was like, what is happening? Like even Sprig is just like, trustworthy. <laughs> oh man, it was crazy, uh, but yeah, Marcy saves Sprig, the stink shrooms go off, scaring the queen off, and thus scaring the rest of the ants off. They save the day. Ooh, uh, quest complete. <laughs> and the gates finally open. And they have this nice little talk. And again, this is the part where it seems like it's going to end. Because, you know, they have, like, Marcy walking off with Sprig. Or Mar walking out with Sprig. Sprig's, like, asking these boatload of questions. And it's like, okay, yeah, this seems like this is a good place to cut. But no, they keep going. Like, they go to the gate. The gate opens up. They are, they see the inside of Utopia, which kind of looks like Atlantis. Um, I have, I mean, they're on the water. Is that what's going to happen? It's going to, is it going to sink? <laughs> but, um, yeah. And, oh yeah, by the way, Marcy Wu, that's her name. Um, Sasha Waybright is, Sasha, Waybright is Sasha's last name? I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I put it in, I put it in the tag, I put it in the tag for that, for the Sasha episode. But, yeah, so... They go inside, they see the the newts, we got more newts, I'm taking a guess, that are probably, yeah, so they come in and um, they're greeted by Lady Olivia, who, from what I'm getting, from what I, from what I got, 
gave tasks Marcy with the quest, and she sees that she now has company, and just the way that she talks, it's like, okay, you're evil, aren't you? <laughs> like, the way she talks, the way she delivers the lines, and the fact that she called, or no, wait, no, she didn't call him peasant, she, um, there were some newt guard, and there were some newt people that Marcy was talking with earlier that called Pop Pop a peasant, like, who are these, like, what are these peasants doing here with you? It's like, okay. And, yeah, so Anne and Marcy then talk, obviously, and, like, Anne talks to, Anne tells Marcy about Sasha, how they met, how they saw each other, but then they got into a fight, and so they don't know, and she doesn't know what to do, and Marcy's like, well, obviously, we're not gonna leave without Sasha, we have to find her, but in the meantime, we just gotta figure out how to get home, and so they're like, yeah, and they, and they do a strike pose, like, we can do anything, and then, I kid you not, I actually freaked out when I saw, when this happened. So they pan away up towards the tower where, uh, from what I'm guessing, is the king. And there's a few. So um, the way that he talks, it's like we find our we can our uh, finally our new piece has arrived. Like he has a chest for it, and Marcy's there, and then he places Anne places a piece of Anne that looks like Anne right next to her, and it's like we can finally set things in motion. It's like. So it sounds, so this obviously sounds like our big, that's, this is obviously our big bad of the show, I'm guessing, because this is the king, so it's probably the big bad, and the reason why I freaked out, because it's, he's voiced by Keith David, and one, just having Keith David alone is freaking awesome, like, if he's the big bad of the show, oh boy, is this gonna be fun, and Two, the the other reason why I like it is because if there isn't a princess and the frog joke in this show, oh boy, are they missing? <laughs> because because for those who don't know, in Princess and the Frog, Keith David voiced Doctor Facilier, so the Shadow Man. So um, uh, I want some joke at least. I mean, I, I maybe maybe I mean if that's kind of the part of the point is like he or maybe or maybe that's just the level of the joke. But, I mean, I'm just saying, Keith David as your big bad in a show about amphibians, you need to at least reference the other movie where there was amphibians in it. So, yeah. Alright, so that was, yeah, that was pretty much episode 26, Marcy at the Gates. We finally have Marcy in the show. I, she's definitely, she definitely reminds me of Luz. I can't say that enough. And and Marcy maybe have something going on. I don't know. I mean, I'm definitely I've I've definitely dove into stuff online, and it's like, eh. but I mean, Lumini seems to be bright, burning brighter right now. But who knows? Maybe who knows? Maybe the season two finale will, sh or maybe the rest of the amphibious show we'll see. But for now, yeah, very intriguing. Very excited to see where we go now with this. But yeah, so. That's episode 26, Marcy at the Gates. Hope you all, you will hope everyone enjoyed. I don't know why I was going to say y'all. I'm not from, I'm not from Texas. I'm from Illinois and I go to Nebraska for college. I don't know. That's my brain, you know. <laughs>